My name's Aurora Arce Dulski. Nice to meet you. I'm nice Sienna you. Posh. What made you happy in life? And how did you get through times that were hard? Not giving up. Working hard and whatever um, made me feel good, you know, um, whether it's being a mother, I was a stay-at-home mother and uh, for 14 years, so I raised um, three children. And it wasn't, uh, the difficult time was, I think, financial. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but this was, you know, back in the uh, uh, 1980s, you know, so it's not as bad now, but it was still difficult, you know, because my husband, uh, he was self-employed and, um, you know, we didn't, uh, uh, we lived a very simple life. So, uh, and we had to be careful with our money. And uh, I think that was hard. Um, uh, but uh, my mother used to always tell me, um, uh, living a simple life is like, you know, it's like having gold, you know. Um, you know, you live life simple and the, and the hardships, you know, uh, you go through it, you, um, you get through them. You know, um, money isn't everything, you know. Um, uh, finding um, a good life and living a simple life um, it was going to make me happy, you know, it was going to make me content. Uh, but it took a while to find that, you know, um, you know, because living at home or being a stay home mom, you know, there's a, a lot of responsibility, you know, I didn't. Uh, uh, sent my kids to preschool. I stayed home with them and worked with them and taught them uh, myself. So I worked with them and then got them ready for kindergarten. Uh, so it was mostly, I felt like eventually I felt like um, I didn't have a life myself, my own identity, you know. And uh, so then when they got old enough to get to school, uh, to go to school, I went back to school myself too. And I, I, uh, I went to school in the evening. So my husband could take care of the kids at night and get them ready uh, for bed and all that. I was at school. So, um, and then when I got home, um, I would study all night. And then the next day, you know, maybe I get a few hours sleep. The next day I was with the kids and I took them to school. And it was like that for quite a few years. So it was difficult, it was difficult, but just, you don't give up, you know, you, you figure out what your dream is, what your goal is, and then you just keep, keep work, working at it. you know, you don't give up, you keep trying to uh, reach that goal that you want. And, um, you know, eventually you get there, you know, you just don't give up. People give up easily, you know, um, but when you find that uh, you succeed, it only gives you more confidence in yourself, more confidence in the ability that you have to get through those hard times, you know? And uh, yeah, I remember when I got, I got married when I was 17, uh, very young. And uh, I remember um, after about, <laughs> about a year, I went, and visited my mom at her work. And I said, mom, I don't know if I can do this. It's so hard. He's, you know, I, it's so hard, you know, living with another person. And um, she, she says, oh, you need to go back. Go back, figure things out, just go back. It, you know, and I, so I went back and, you know, we figured things out. And then about f uh, a few years later, I said, mom, I don't know, man, this, I don't know, I don't know if I could do this marriage thing, you know? And, and she goes, no, no, you can do it. You don't give up, just go back. You know, after about five years, you come back to me and tell me how you feel. And, um, you know, well, now we've been married for uh, 40 years. So, same person, so. <laughs> after about five or 10 years, I figured, well, you know, might as well stay, <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, things, things are hard when you, th things get hard. They're not easy all the time. And not everything makes you happy, you know. But sometimes you're content, you know. So you just, you know, that's enough. Did you go back to school for like high school or like college? Or college. Oh, 
college? Yeah, I went, uh, I actually graduated high school, but um, yeah, I, I went back to, uh, to college. Yeah, I started college uh, after, I think I was 17, mm-hmm. uh, after I got married, you know, and um, I wasn't ready for it. You know, mm-hmm. you have to, when you're a student, you have to be dedicated, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, I was just not ready for it, you know, mm-hmm. so uh, uh, I also went into the Army, uh, and um, and then uh, after that, you know, uh, my husband and I decided to have kids, so, uh, but like I said, you know, uh, I needed more, mm-hmm. and eventually I went back to school at night, and uh and I got my degree. I got five degrees. So, uh, wow. but I, you know, it was it was tough. Mm-hmm. But um, I love learning. So mm-hmm. you know, and uh, I, when I was in junior high, I wasn't into school. I was pretty much a delinquent, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, seventh and eighth grade, uh, seventh, eighth, and ninth, I was pretty much a delinquent. Uh, I didn't go to school a lot, and. Um, I think one of the reasons uh, why I didn't is because I didn't, I had a really hard time with school. Uh, in elementary, I, I was sick a lot and I missed a lot of school, you know. Um, and then uh, when I got to junior high, uh, learning was difficult, English was difficult, uh, Spanish was my first language, and uh, math and English were just very difficult. And I just, I felt, uh, I didn't feel comfortable in school. You know, I felt like a, kind of like a dummy. You know, I didn't feel intelligent like everybody else. I didn't feel like I was at that same level as everybody else. And it made me feel um, uh, not very confident in my abilities. So I cut school. Eventually, I think in ninth grade, I remember um, actually going to my science class. <laughs> And uh, I really love science, you know. And my teacher took me aside and said, Aurora, you know, why don't you come to school more often? Then you can enjoy science more, you know, because and because he knew I loved it, right? And I said, Well, I don't know, you know. He goes, You stop running around with that crowd, you know, and come back to school, you know, and um Back then, they just pushed you to the next grade. So I I was going to 10th grade. And I finally figured out that, you know, I needed, I need to um, find my direction. I need to find um, something that's gonna make me happy, you know? And so I I remember the summer before I went into 10th grade, uh, I really liked being outdoors and playing sports. When When I was at home, I used to watch tennis a lot. And so I said, you know, I'm going to teach myself how to play tennis. So that summer, I taught myself to play tennis. And then when I got into 10th grade, I got onto the tennis team. And, uh, and then uh, in school, uh, I worked really, really hard. Um, I took my biology class that I always wanted to take. Um, I took foreign language. I took the classes that I felt I really wanted to learn about, you know and I was got involved in sports. So um, I learned so much in high school, more than, you know, elementary school, more than junior high. And then, uh, like I said, I got married when I was very young and, uh, you know, raised uh, three kids and decided, you know, I need to go back to school. You know, I need to do what I really love to do and that's to learn, you know, and, uh, so I did, you know, I went back to school. It was tough, it was de- definitely tough, you know. Uh, so, and, and so now I work at a community college and I work with uh, students with dis- disabilities. So that's what I do. I've been doing that for uh, close to 16 years now. When you're struggling spiritually, what do you do to help yourself? I try to spend as much time as I can with my with my uh, my family, not just my kids, my grandkids, but also my my brother, and my sister that live here in Sacramento. Uh, for some reason, it's just that when I spend time with them, they just like feed my soul, you know. 
uh, we laugh and we talk, you know. Um, my brother and sister loved telling stories, you know, when we grew up. We had a, we had a really, really good um, childhood. Um, uh, and um, just spending time with them, you know, having breakfast with them and um, uh, talking about things that we love, you know, music, art. Uh, so I'm a local artist here in Sacramento as well, and they're like my fans, you know. Um, I'm a very um, introverted person, you know, and um, so um, I've had some of my art show, uh, uh, show in galleries here in Sacramento, and I just, I feel so uncomfortable talking with people, you know, that come to see the show. And so they're there, and they just like, they just uh, kind of show me off, you know, and they talk and uh, they talk about my art and uh, and uh, they just like they just give me so much confidence, you know, and um, and and just believe what I do, you know, and they love what I do, you know, and they're just great supporters in what I do, you know, and so uh, when I'm feeling uh, like I need that, you know, um, uh, I'll spend time with them or um, I'll also spend a lot of time doing my art because I feel that um, creating is like medicine, you know, and um, it kind of, it, it makes me feel good. It makes me, uh, it gives me peace is what it does. And, um, and, and so I spent, I do spend a lot of time alone doing that, you know, um, I, I'm not a, a, a social butterfly, you know, um, like I said, I'm an introvert, so um, I do spend a lot of time, but I, I don't mind. I, I don't mind being alone, you know, and when you're creating something, sometimes, you know, you have to be alone, you know, but um, spending time with family is probably the best medicine you can have. Have you experienced visitors from spirits of your ancestors? So I had a dream about my dad and um, it was weird. Um, he um he saw that i had these tennis shoes on and uh he, he saw that i had these spider webs on my shoes and uh he was he grabbed my foot and he was cleaning off the spider webs from my shoe and when he uh you know the tongue part he was cleaning underneath and there was a black widow underneath the tongue and it bit him he goes, oh no, mija, the black widow got me. And then I'm like, dad, I'm sorry. And then my dream was over. I'm like, what the heck did that mean? What does it mean, you know? I mean, I have, I've had dreams about my dad, you know, but, um, you know, what was he trying to tell me? You know, why did that happen to me? Was I wasn't thinking about black widows. Because sometimes you dream, sometimes what you're thinking throughout the day uh, will affect, will cause you to have dreams at night about those things, you know? And uh, so I'm thinking, you know, what was I thinking? You know, I mean, I think about my parents all the time, you know, because I miss them. Uh, but was he trying to, you know, tell me something was going to happen? Uh, I, I don't know. I'm still thinking about that, you know. I'm still thinking why that happened, why I dreamt that. So <laughs> I'm, um, I do have dreams. Uh, and I tend to think about them afterwards deeply, you know. Because sometimes dreams in some way things can happen you know they're like um uh premonition type of thing you know and i don't uh discard them easily you know so um and then you know they say you know when you dream about someone that's already passed um you don't normally see their faces you know and uh, I saw my dad's face. So that's another thing I think about, you know, that's weird that I saw my dad's face and, and uh, 
the whole thing was disturbing in a way, you know, and I'm still thinking about it, you see? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, I, I do believe in um, taking dreams seriously in a way. There's something about it, you know, uh, uh, you know, not, not taking it 100% seriously, but just thinking about why you dreamt that, you know, there has to be a reason why you dreamt that, you know, were you thinking about your dad? Uh, was I thinking about my dad? And like I said, I think about him all the time. I think about, about my parents all the time. And I, every night before I go to bed, I, you know, I say my prayers, uh, so. What are your spiritual beliefs about life? Um, because, you know, I was uh, raised, uh, uh, baptized as a Catholic, uh, and then my parents, um, uh, you know, uh, decided that uh, they wanted, to, they converted to Pentecostal, which is a serious change, mm -hmm. you know, uh, considering you know, both my parents uh, came from a very small town uh, deep in Mexico, and uh, Catholicism is what they uh, grew up with. So, um, uh, I try to keep an open mind about many different religions, not just, um, not just, uh, Christianity, you know, uh, uh, I enjoy reading about different religions. Um, I can't exclude, uh, Christianity, you know, I can't really say that your religion's wrong and mine is right. Um, I just know that um, when I pray, it gives me peace. And uh, uh, that's how, just how I look at it. I don't say one religion is different than the other. Um, uh, I just try to find a balance, you know, of my own beliefs. I don't try to believe what you believe. Uh, I don't try to believe what you believe. I believe what makes me the person I am. So um, I can't change what you believe, you know. What were your favorite foods growing up? Obviously, Mexican food is my favorite mm -hmm. food, okay? <laughs> um, I love making tortillas with my mom. Uh, she would make just dozens and dozens of tortillas. And my dad was pretty good at it too. Uh, but my mom would just make stacks of tortillas, you know. And uh, it's funny because one time uh, when my mom wasn't there, uh, um, we decided to try to make tortillas on our own. And um, she would never, she didn't have a recipe. She just like threw a little bit of this and threw a little bit of that. And that's how she did it, you know. She didn't tell us. She's, so we figured, okay, I know that she used flour. And then uh, she used... Uh, lard too and um she used um either it was baking soda or um bacon it's similar bacon powder well i don't remember which one we used but it was a disaster okay it turned out like uh seriously they weren't tortillas they were just bowls <laughs> hard bowls and uh so uh yeah so my mom saw that and she just kind of laughed about it you know and and we always ask her what was your recipe mom what's your recipe oh i'm not telling you my recipe no that's a secret <laughs> so to this day i don't know how to make tortillas you know but that was our favorite i think we we spent a lot of time making tortillas or or um she would show us how to um after she mixed everything together she would show us how to make the balls and, uh, and then uh, sometimes she would let us play with some of the dough, uh, and then she would show us how to roll up the uh, tortilla. So uh, yeah, that was, that was our favorite thing to do.